Oh shit. Stop that. The equipment we all know and the technology that has changed modern cinematography. All great things always have a father. Anatoly Kokush is a Ukrainian engineer and the inventor of the first car Kimra Crane and his company Filmotechnik is a brand that every filmmaker in the world should know. I highly recommend you to see a great documentary that will give you a closer look at the history and evolution of this gear. On the market you will find many types of such equipment, but they are not cheap toys and are designed mostly for high budget productions. That's why about 6 months ago Tilta changed the rules of the game again and introduced the Hydra Mini Arm, which is basically just a smaller and much much cheaper version of such equipment. And here comes the first question. Does cheaper mean less advanced, less professional or simply worse? In my opinion absolutely not. Hydra Mini Arm is just simply smaller with a smaller payload but still in my opinion 10 kilograms is all I need. Now of course the super expensive arms have a load capacity much higher but we all know and see the direction in which technology is evolving and if you don't shoot with IMAX cameras then you should notice that the camera no longer has to weigh 30 kilograms. Now, in the summer, right after the introductions of the Tilta Mini Arm, I had the great pleasure to play with the test version of this arm for a few days. And here at the very beginning, I would like to clarify something. Over the past few weeks, you might have seen some videos about faulty suction cups and other components. First of all, this video just shows the first test version of the Hydro Alien Mini and yes, the first version had some obvious issues just like any prototype, but all these defective elements have been modified. The body was rebuilt and now has a different locking mechanism and the suction cups have some kind of special new support brackets. Remember that the first test version of the Hydro Mini was prepared already in the middle of the year, so Tilta had as much as half a year to make all the improvements. I've seen both versions of this equipment and honestly Tilta did a really good job here. You get 3 cases with all the equipment. Everything is super high quality. Remember that the kit does not include any kind of battery. You need to buy a power station such as EcoFlow separately. In the case you will find 6 suction cups, pipes, panorama module, tilt module, 3 elements of the arm, spring arm, safety straps, monitor bracket, power and signal cable, control panel, wire ropes and other arm components, a set of screws and tools, battery mount for the camera and other small accessories. Now, the whole setup of this is quite simple and intuitive and for all of you who have some kind of technical mind, even a video tutorial is unnecessary, however, Tilta has released a great video in which Nix takes you all the way through the installation process in great detail, so of course I will not repeat it here. But I will show you some tricks that I discovered during long weeks of testing. In the kit you get 4 special suction cups with clamps for 50mm pipe in order to mount the whole base and 2 suction cups for the monitor and accessories. The suction cups have special adjustable support so you can profile them to hold perfectly to the car roof. They are not large and you may feel that they are not enough for such heavy equipment, however keep in mind that the main job of the suction cups is not to hold all this equipment on the roof but more to hold it in a certain position. Holding all that stuff in a safe way is actually the job of the holding straps because they are the ones that press the whole base to the roof. However, for your personal level of comfort and safety, you can add as many additional suction cups as you want. The simplest solution are the ones from Manfrotto and if you want really decent big suction cups, you can find everything you need on Cinemedia store. On the other hand, if you are a fan of more heavy duty solutions like me for example, then you can try to find some sort of solid mounting points on your car and build yourself a solid mounting base. I use special 50mm clamps and aluminum pipes for this, which is basically industry standard in modifications of this type. This will give you a much higher safety level, especially in case of bad weather, and besides it will speed up the whole installation process. The panorama module is a super high quality heavy duty aluminum base on which the panorama axis motor and the whole mechanism, gear wheel and drive belt are mounted. Which is great, it has kind of tensioners on the gear wheel so that the belt is perfectly tight and this is very important for the smooth performance of the whole arm. On the top of this wheel you will find 4 bolts and special pins that shows us the exact position for applying the next part that is the tilt axis module. 
Tilt module is also a great quality heavy duty aluminum frame with built in motor and controller. The tilt motor is pretty easy to install but it's also quite heavy and if you are putting it on a big car, do it carefully. I used two very simple pieces of wood for this. I put the module on them and position it so that it fits perfectly in the holes. Then I remove the wooden super pads and put it in to the right place. Finally, to set a ready and install base, I add the mounting straps. Now, going back to the video I was talking about, that safety strap is just incorrectly attached because all it does is press the base to the roof but does not hold it sideways. That's why what I mentioned before, it's so important. If you have no experience of this type of installation, then just do everything exactly the same way as in the tutorial. Strap installation is also quite easy, but here are some tips. Always put the strap with the buckle opening to the outside. The strap should never twist or rotate. Make sure it is always flat and tight. Straps should never overlap. Then it is very difficult to tighten them properly. Insert the belt into the buckle from the bottom side. Make sure that when tightening the strap it should wrap around at least once. Be sure that the buckle has completely closed and try to organize such things in a clear and safe way. The war arm is made up of super lightweight and super easy to install modular elements and a great quality brilliant spring arm dedicated to any type of gimbal up to 10 kg. This arm helps the gimbal stabilize any kind of bumps. All micro vibrations are eliminated by a great vibration isolator, which you can also modify depending on the size of the gimbal. And all the forces and stress generated by turning, accelerating and braking are handled by a special joint in which you have a resistance adjustment so that the gimbal does not swing like crazy. The Hydro Alien Mini has very powerful and high performance motors, so it needs a power base like EcoFlow. I already mentioned it to you about it before and honestly, I think that every filmmaker should have something like this. Incredibly powerful and useful power station for any kind of project. In fact, this is not one of the cheapest solutions, but for now I still do not have any cheaper alternative for you, but as soon as I find something like this, I will let you know immediately. Here, exactly like in the Tilta tutorial, connect the controller, connect the power supply, activate the joystick, start the motor, switch to control mode and that's it. We have full control of the arm. Now, first of all, I set the control mode, that is, which axis I want to have on which hand. Basically, you can customize it however you want. Under the joysticks, you have knobs for adjusting the speed and smoothness of the arm. Now, one of the most important and useful options in terms of safety is endpoint calibration. That is, setting the maximum position for the arm in each direction, based on the height of the car and the place where you are shooting. You don't want to crash the camera and gimbal or swing too far to any side to prevent a possible collision. So, you move the arm to the position which you want it to be your end position, set the end point and that's it. Then, even if you hold down the joystick, the arm will stop precisely in the final position. This feature obviously works in both pan and tilt movements. Another great option is a Z-axis stabilizer. It doesn't work as outstanding and immediately as in advanced tanks or like in Ronin 4D, but I'm really very impressed by this feature and I didn't expect such great stabilization, which is insanely important and necessary when you are shooting in heavy conditions. Apart from great stabilization, this option also prevents from having too much stress on all connection points and mounts. It is possible to set up the control panel in such a way that it controls both the wall arm and the gimbal. This is of course quite difficult for one camera operator, but possible and then in fact a two-person team will be able to take the simplest shots. However, it will definitely be much better and safer to have a team of three or even four people, that is a driver, a cameraman and camera arm operator. This way the arm operator can constantly watch the arm as well as the area around the car, which is extremely important for safety. Anyway, you know, it all depends on the kind of shots you take and the kind of gimbal and camera you use. Well, after all, remember that RS3 and Ronin 4D have better and better tracking mode, so really, for the simplest shots you just need this virtual operator. You select the object and control only the arm and the shots will make it by itself. So, if the road you are shooting on is completely safe and free of risk, then such a two-person setup with a smart camera is also possible and result quite satisfied. 
Guys, there are so many different setup options and combinations about which I'd like to tell you that I need to make a second episode about it. We will look at all the setups, settings of individual gimbals and some more advanced stuff in great detail because it is an extremely long subject. But in a quick overview I use three setups. First is the Ronin RS3 with Pocket 6K and Vespeed Primes. The next is a Ronin 4D with Vespeed's or brand new series Saturn 35mm full frame carbon fiber anamorphic lens, which I will tell you much more about in the next episode because it seems to be a great lens designed for a special kind of jobs. And the last one is a Ronin R2 Pro, also with Pocket 6K but with bigger Vespeed cyber lenses. I wanted to check out these setups for several reasons, to compare the different performance of them and see which setup is best for specific type of shots. You will find all my conclusions, comparisons and technical solutions in my next video, so please be sure to subscribe my channel. You know me and you know that I always have to modify something. Nothing big at this point, but two small things to start with. The Hydra Mini Arm is not a piece of equipment that in every single part of the world you can just take to the street and shoot with. This is equipment for special jobs for which you need a space or a road closed off to regular cars. For example, in the place where I live I can carry equipment on the roof of the car which to the rear can extend 1.5 meters while to the sides and to the front it cannot extend at all. That is why I modified the steel wire ropes a bit and reduced the entire arm by one element so that my camera arm can fit in the required size and I can move between locations without having to remove the entire arm. The second thing is not even a modification but a sort of additional accessory. A rain cover that was designed and made by my amazing wife for me. In fact, the whole Tilta Mini arm body is completely waterproof but in the front it has a hole for the arm and several times I was shooting in a quite difficult conditions and didn't want any sand, rain, snow or water to get inside. You have probably noticed that the most professional camera chase car are quite fast and large vehicle. Of course, not without reason. Such a car has to have enough power to shoot dynamic scenes and besides it has to carry the entire crew and the entire equipment. This is of course does not mean that you need to buy a special car. You can mount the Hydra Mini to almost any type of car, but make sure and check in the specifications the payload capacity of the roof as well as check what material the roof is made of. Because plastic or very flexible metal sheets are not a very good surface for the suction cups. And all the equipment together with the camera and gimbal weighs about 100 kilograms, so keep that in mind. The answer is very simple. Renting a professional chase car with a complete crew for one day of shooting is a really expensive game, but for a similar price you can buy the entire Tilta Mini Arm Kit. The fact is that when you rent such equipment, you are also paying for an experienced professional crew with a very high safety level, but I think a few years ago we had the same kind of discussion, buying a drone versus hiring a cinema style helicopter. What the answer is, we all know. Don't get me wrong, because these guys are doing a great and very responsible job, but after all there is absolutely nothing in this world that you can't learn, so maybe it is worth trying to do it yourself and see if the quality of the shots will be as good as the ones made by professionals. On the other hand, the most important point in my opinion, this is not equipment for everyone. Yes, I know that for a Tilta marketing this is not good information, but if you do not feel some kind of passion and technical skills, then please let go. Don't get me wrong, but I know a lot of filmmakers for whom using a tripod is the max they can do. I saw a lot of videos and photos of Tilta Alien without any safety straps mounted in a wrong and dangerous way. Such situations absolutely should not happen on the road. You have to realize that this is a very responsible kind of profession and you have to be absolutely sure that you are doing it in a way that is completely safe for everyone around you. So if you are going to buy it, be sure that at least one person in your team will be able to safely handle this equipment from the technical side. In my opinion car shots have three levels, creative handheld, car rigging and all kinds of stabilizers and finally the third highest level which is a moving camera arm. 
Each new level gives you more and more control over the camera, the frame and what you actually want to capture. And here you can finally be with the camera wherever you want. You can be in front or behind, you can be on the right or on the left side, extremely low, just a few centimeters from the road and even almost 6 meters over the ground. And all this in just a few seconds. You no longer have to reposition the camera mount to change the camera angle, which saves you a whole bunch of time. Another benefit which is even more important is the creative use of camera movement. And I think that's what will make you stand out as a filmmaker and what will make your shots stand out from others. On the other hand, remember that this equipment without a good and creative crew is just a piece of steel and aluminum. Extremely important here is a good and harmonized team, carefully planned shots and car blocking, but honestly I think that after a dozen hours with such equipment, the shots you will be able to take will be absolutely outstanding and epic. So if you are working with a good talented team and want to expand your range of skills to cover just such specific jobs, no matter if for professional themes or you know smaller projects or even YouTube car shows, then by all means this is equipment for you. And yes, I am absolutely sure when I say professional filming, because in today's world of gimbals, camera heads and all kinds of stabilizers, being part of the club of professionals depends on what kind of camera you can put on it. And to be honest, with the first version of this arm, I had a kind of feeling of disappointment, because the first test version had a payload for only about 5 kilograms. I thought at the time that this was too small for, you know, a big project and it would take a lot of compromise in the choice of camera and gimbal. But now, the payload capacity is up to 10 kilograms, and you can basically put the Ronin 2 Pro with our Alexa Mini, I have absolutely no doubt that this equipment is going to perform to a high standard also in very professional projects. As I said, forget about this equipment if you are a solo operator or if you don't feel capable to deal with it from the technical side, because it's not a toy and the things you want to do with it is a serious job. Imagine that. It's a giant piece of steel moving at a speed of 150 km per hour, which without control and without a high safety level can hurt someone. So keep that in mind and see you in the next episode.